Hello and welcome to this video covering my top 5 cards in each color for Historic Brawl based on personal experience and backed up by the stats from untapped.gg. Improve your game today by downloading its free deck tracker using the link below and support the channel at the same time. These will be cards that can slot into multiple decks and archetypes, therefore making them safe investments for your precious wild cards. So let's dive right into it, starting out with the white cards, where we have a few honorable mentions, including Farewell, the new 6-mana sweeper from Kamigawa that can deal with a wide range of card types and even graveyards. Then another card that doesn't see nearly enough play is Curse of Silence, a 1-mana enchantment meant to make the opponent's commander too more expensive, and then even if they play it we can still sacrifice it to draw a card. And then our final honorable mention is Elspeth Conquers Death, a great saga that acts as removal and eventually gets back a creature or planeswalker from your graveyard. Then coming in at number 5, we have a pair of 4 mana sweepers, and you can't really beat the originals, Wrath of God and Day of Judgment. If you need to reset the board, there's no better tool. Then at number 4 we have Skyclave Apparition, a great little creature that can deal with permanence with mana value 4 or less, so it can even deal with the opponent's ramp artifacts, which are plentiful in the format, and you don't need to worry about giving the opponent their permanent back once they deal with the Apparition, as it will be gone forever. Then at number 3 we have a 1 mana artifact creature, Esper Sentinel, a nightmare for any decks with a lot of non-creature spells, as the opponent will have to pay its tax or have to let you draw a card. And then at number 2 we have a wide range of captains, including Ranger of Eos, Ranger Captain and Inquisitor Captain, all cards that will help you find additional creatures, potentially even the aforementioned Esper Sentinel. And then at number 1 we have Swords to Plowshares, you cannot really beat its efficiency at dealing with creatures at instant speed, even exiling them so it can deal with recursive threats as well. Then moving on to blue, we have an honorable mention in the form of Karn's Temporal Sundering, a legendary sorcery, so that means we have to control a legendary creature or planeswalker before we can cast it, but then it is incredibly powerful, letting you take an extra turn and bounce a permanent at the same time. Then coming in at number 5 we have a relatively new addition, a counter spell that can potentially counter the opponent's commander for just 1 mana, Wash Away can also be cast for 3 mana as a regular counter spell instead. Another relatively recent addition from Alchemy is Discover the Formula, 5 mana to find 3 cards and make all the cards in your hand cheaper. At number 3 another classic is Counter Spell, double blue to counter spell, can't really ask for more. Then at number 2 we have a card that can help blue decks recover if they fall behind on board, which they can sometimes struggle with, and River's Rebuke will bounce every non-land permanent back to the opponent's hand, including any potential ramp artifacts, so that will significantly slow down the opponent and buy you a lot of time. And then at number 1 we have a card that's quite similar to the honorable mention, but Time Warp only costs 5 mana and doesn't have any weird restrictions, Plus it also doesn't get exiled, so we can potentially get it back from our graveyard to chain together a few extra turns. Then moving on to black, we have a few honorable mentions, including Phyrexian Arena, a card that's near and dear to my heart, can be a little bit slow to get going, so you want to make sure you can back it up with plenty of removal so you don't fall too far behind on board. And then a City Stalker Connoisseur has kind of replaced Gonti in a lot of decks at 4 mana as a great value creature with Death Touch. Then coming in at number 5 we have another legendary sorcery, Yogmos Vile Offering, can potentially be a great 2 for 1 dealing with a creature or planeswalker and getting something back from the graveyard including the opponent's graveyard as well. Then at number 4 I've grouped together a few 2 mana removal spells and those include Feed the Swarm, a pretty unique answer for enchantments in black, and then we've got the instant speed versions with Heartless Act, Power Word Kill, Price of Fame, which only costs 2 mana when targeting the opponent's commander if it's a creature, and Infernal Grasp. Then at number 3 we have a very powerful planeswalker, Liliana Dreadhorde General, and she kind of does it all, can provide card advantage, a board presence in the form of zombie tokens, and can potentially stabilize you using the minus 4 if the opponent only has 2 creatures out. And then at number 2 we have a powerful 1 mana sorcery, has seen plenty of play in a lot of competitive formats, and it's no different in a historic brawl, Thoughtseize lets you take a look at the opponent's hand to take their best non-land card away. And then at number 1 we have a 1 mana card that's been banned in a lot of formats, but is still legal in a historic brawl to let you cheat out cards ahead of schedule, Dark Ritual lets you add triple black to your mana pool, essentially giving you a 2 mana advantage for a turn, incredibly powerful and deserving of a number 1 spot.
Then moving on to red, we have a few honorable mentions, including a braid, a two mana instant capable of dealing with creatures or artifacts, so it can deal with opposing ramp artifacts as well. And then a fable of the mirror breaker, another honorable mention that has steadily gone up in value recently, capable of ramping in the form of treasure tokens, gives you some card selection on chapter two, and eventually transforms, letting you copy your creatures, which is awesome if you have any enter the battlefield effect. Then at number 5 we have a pair of 5 mana dragons, including a goldspan dragon even after the alchemy nerf, still very powerful, gives you a huge mana advantage, and then a glory bringer, a dragon that can come down, exert to take out an opposing creature, and then will keep doing it if the opponent doesn't answer it. At number 4 we have a 3 mana creature providing a lot of card selection, potentially even card advantage if you're empty handed, season pyromancer, and then we can still use it out of the graveyard to make a pair of elemental tokens. At number 3 we have Bonecrusher Giant, can deal 2 damage with the Stomp Adventure, even has some secret text when it comes to protection or fog effects, and then the 3 mana creature is also very efficient. Then at number 2, speaking of efficiency, you can't really beat a Lightning Bolt, the original 3 damage burn spell. And then at number 1, we have a 4 mana Planeswalker, Chandra, Torch of Defiance, can come down dealing 4 damage to an opposing creature, and then provides extra mana with the plus 1, adding double red, can even provide extra card advantage as well. Then moving on to green, we have a few honorable mentions, including Into the North, essentially a 2 mana rampant growth, can only find snow lands, but it's pretty easy to include a few snow basics in your deck, so it can also fix your mana. Then another honorable mention is Elder Gargroth, a creature that will quickly run away with the game if it doesn't get answered immediately. And then another honorable mention is Oracle of Moldaya, especially powerful in decks with a lot of lands, especially if those also include a lot of fetch lands to shuffle away the top card of your deck. Then coming in at number 5 we have another ramp card, Cultivate is kind of the bigger version of Into the North, helping you find two basic lands, putting one of them into play tapped, so it can also fix your mana. At number 4 we have one of the best top end creatures in green, Kogla can come down and fight an opposing creature, can even make it indestructible by picking up a human, and when it attacks it can take out artifacts and enchantments from the opponent, and those are card types you definitely want to be able to answer in the format. At number 3 we have one of the best planeswalkers in the recent memory, Nissa, who shakes the world can almost double your mana if you're a green heavy deck, and then provides a nice bit of board presence, turning lands into hasty 3-3 creatures with vigilance that will still be able to tap for mana afterwards. Then at number 2 we have the Great Henge, an awesome artifact providing a lot of card advantage in creature heavy decks, just need to make sure you can enable it by playing some large creatures beforehand. And then the number one best green card in Historic Brawl, also backed up by the untapped data, is Lenor Elves. There's no better creature to play on turn one to lead to some very explosive starts, just make sure you have enough untapped green sources to play it early. Then moving on to our artifacts, it was pretty difficult to narrow it down to a top 5, but we do have some honorable mentions, including a Solemn Simulacrum, a creature you can play in any deck to help you ramp, finding a basic land when it enters, and it draws a card when it dies. Then we also have Mox Amber, now this is a card I would only recommend playing if your commander costs 1 or 2 mana, so you can start tapping it for mana right away to get the most out of it. And then Gilded Lotus, another powerful ramp card that costs 5 mana to get in place, so it's a little pricey, but then once you get it in play it can tap for 3 mana right away, so you can still have a very mana efficient turn. Then coming in at number 5, best artifact in Historic Brawl is the Celestus, a relatively recent addition, but it gives you a nice bit of card selection when it switches between day and night, even if you don't have any other daybound cards to synergize with it. Then at number 4 we have a great curve topper for any creature heavy deck, the Immortal Sun is probably not a card you'll be playing if your commander happens to be a planeswalker, but otherwise a great source of card advantage and mana advantage. At number 3 we have a card that's been banned in other commander formats, but is still legal in Historic Brawl, can lead to some very powerful infinite combos, of course we're talking about Paradox Engine, a great in any deck with a lot of ramp artifacts, and also works very nicely with commanders like Oswald Fiddlebender and Captain Cisse, which can find the Paradox Engine, which will then untap your commander so you can use it over and over again. 
Then at number 2 we have a selection of 4 mana ramp artifacts, spearheaded by Key to the Archive, which can also find a card from the spellbook, including powerhouses like Time Warp, and then we also have Hedron Archive and Firemind Vessel. And then at number 1, the best artifacts for Historic Brawl are once again a selection of ramp artifacts, this time at 2 mana, highlighted by Arcane Signet. We've got Cold Steel Heart, Mindstone, Guardian Idol, and even Ornithopter of Paradise. These are great, especially in colors that aren't green, that may not have access to a ton of other ramp options. Next up, I've also included a top 3 for every 2 color pair, so we'll start with Blue White Azorius, where we have Teferi, who slows down time at number 3, followed by Teferi Time Raveler, even the alchemy version is still very powerful at 4 mana. And then at number 1, we have, you guessed it, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, so our top 3 is all Teferis. Next up we have Red White, Boros, where at number 3 I've included Showdown of the Scalds. Now this is a card you only really want to play if you're playing a very low curve aggressive deck, so you can make sure you can play all those extra cards while they're still exiled. Then at number 2 we have Blade Historian. Now this is a card I would only play in a creature heavy deck, so you can play it and give your entire team double strike to have an immediate impact on the board. And then at number one, a very versatile card is Lightning Helix, can slot into any deck, dealing three damage and gaining three life for just two mana. Then moving on to Blue Black or Demir, we have Hostage Taker at number three as a way to steal opposing creatures or artifacts. Ideally, we can replay the stolen card right away, so we don't risk losing it. Then we've got Ashiok Nightmare Muse, a planeswalker that can make two, three nightmare tokens, can also bounce opposing permanents back and make the opponent discard. And at number one, we might have a bit of a surprise here in the form of Consigned to Oblivion, but it's a pretty versatile card, can first use it as a bounce spell for two mana, and then later out of the graveyard we have Oblivion, thanks to Aftermath, as a nice mind rot effect, making the opponent discard two. Moving on to Black Green or Golgari, we have Vraska Relic Seeker at six mana, the powerful planeswalker, can deal with various card types and make menacing pirate tokens. And then Casualties of War is probably one of the best ways to deal with various card types at once. Can feel great if you can set up a nice 3 or even 4 for 1. And at number 1 there's Binding the Old Gods, 4 mana for a very versatile removal spell that will also help you ramp. Then Red Green or Gruul has the Partners at number 3, a recent addition that will pump up your creatures turn after turn, giving them haste as well. Domri Anarch of Bolas, a planeswalker that helps you ramp, fight opposing creatures, even give your team a nice plus one power boost, and can also make your creatures uncounterable, which cannot be underestimated, so it does a lot of different things for just three mana. And then at number one, it might be a bit of a surprise, but was backed up by the untapped data, is Goblin and Archimancer giving all your red and green spells a one mana discount. Then moving on to Blue Red, or is it? We have Electrolyze at number 3, great removal spell that lets you draw a card in a process. At number 2 we have Prismari Command, very versatile, being able to deal with artifacts, dealing 2 damage to any targets, can let you draw and discard, even helps you ramp in the form of a treasure token. And then at number 1 there's Expressive Iteration, as a nice 2 for 1 for just 2 mana, can slot into any Blue Red deck regardless of it being more aggressive or controlling. Then White Black or Orzov has Kambal at number 3, a creature that will drain the opponent whenever they cast a non-creature spell. At number 2 we've got Vanishing Verse to deal with monocolored permanents, and at number 1 D-Spark to deal with any more expensive permanent regardless of its colors. Then Black Red or Haragdos has a few honorable mentions, including Cut to Ribbons as another Aftermath card, as well as Angrath, the 5 mana Planeswalker, which can do a lot of work. And then at number 3 we may not have Angrath, but we do have Angrath's Rampage, which has a nice selection of removal modes between artifacts, planeswalkers and creatures. At number 2 we have Colagans Command, similar to Prismari Command, can deal 2 damage and destroy an artifact, but this one can also make the opponent discard or return a creature from your graveyard. And then at number 1, best black red card in Historic Brawl is Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, making the opponent discard, and then a powerful Elder Giant that you can escape out of the graveyard. Then White Green or Celestia has Dromoka's Command at number 3, as a versatile removal spell, of course you do need some creatures to go with it, but can also deal with opposing enchantments. At number 2 we have Yasharn, a 4-4 creature that finds a plains and a forest, so a nice 3-for-1 potentially. 
And then Mirari's Wake is my number one pick for best green-white card, doubling the mana that your lands produce, giving your creatures plus one plus one can lead to some very powerful plays. And then last but not least, we have Blue-Green or Simic, where we've got a few honorable mentions, including Hydroid Crisis as an awesome mana sink, and then Koma as a very powerful curve topper. But to get there, we do need some ramp, and that's where Root Coil Creeper comes in handy, our number three pick. At number two, we have another two mana ramp creature, Merleaf Pixie, which is a 2 2 flyer, so still has some utility besides tapping for mana. But at number one, we have another Elder Giant, Uro, can put extra lands in play, gain life, and can also be escaped out of the graveyard. Alright, so that rounds out my top 5 for every color and then the top 3 of all the multicolor cards. So these should be relatively safe investments if you're looking to spend some wild cards on Historic Brawl. Let me know in the comments if I missed any important cards and if I should make more of these videos in the future. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.